Hey everyone, today is the first day of Shadowlands Season 1. Mythic Plus is finally open and I'm here with the very first upload for live servers with a push group. And this is basically my push group on the live servers. We're doing a plus 9 theater of pain that we actually timed. And I kind of want to show you the footage and kind of commentate on our thought process and whatnot. Right here off the bat, let me just address you know the most common question. What eye level are you? And everyone's been asking me this. You can look at you can look it up in the armory, but essentially I'm about 185 geared at the time of doing this key. So definitely not super geared. The rest of the party is about 185 as well. And we did this key, you can check it out on the Raider IO. But we didn't pull this blood horn here because he does a very nasty raging tantrum that does a lot of AoE damage. And when we are finally more geared, it's definitely doable. But right here you can see that I asked my druid to dispel this raging tantrum and immediately it would stop doing that so there's no longer any damage going out of the party so that's something that you probably want to consider if you have anyone capable of soothing in your party gonna take a drink here I haven't really drank too much fluids in the day it's been a day of just doing a lot of keys but again just making sure you soothe the tantrum and everything is fine All right, on this boss, normally we will kill Satel first. But what I've done differently this time around is to call the party to focus target on pace run. A single target pace run down. And obviously you guys can see from the kick bars here, we are coordinating our kicks. So I went first, my rogue kicked Nyx, followed by my hunter that will kick third. Or rather he was kicking Satel, and now my boomy will kick. So you can see the solar beam, com the solar beam coming in here. And you guys can see what happens is Zira the fourth council member would randomly jump onto someone and cast opportunity strikes and basically CC them. In this case is on my Boomi. So I quickly paralyze it. As you guys can see, I paralyze it really quick and basically freed my Boomi there. So the idea here is that why we worked on uh, pace ran is because normally I would do it. I would do Satel first, getting everyone to kill Satel. A Satel at 40% becomes immune to damage. It gets an immunity shield. So instead, this time around, we tried getting everyone working on pace run. I kind of liked it. And we killed pace run, as you guys can see, coordinating kicks and whatnot. And now everyone is working on Dacia and cleaving off Satel. Because at 40% right now, you can see that Satel gained an immunity shield and no longer takes any damage. So this is why we are working on Dacia um, at the moment. Pulling Dacia out so we can work on Dacia. Dacia doesn't do much, at 40% he randomly fixates and that's something that can be soothed. When he randomly fixates someone, you can definitely soothe the person. And Rune Masters are actually generally doing okay damage in keys. And you guys can see like on the boss fight like this for me to pull 2.6k, it's actually quite decent. Considering my gear and whatnot. And you guys can see from AoE pulls and I think on the second boss, I'm actually comparable to some of the DPS in my group. So yeah, that's the council fight essentially. I hope keys have been going fine for you guys since it's the first day. We definitely need more gear though to be able to push plus 10s, plus 11s, plus 12s and whatnot. But on the first week for completion, I think like, you know, my group is probably capable of doing completion at I think closer to plus 14 levels. We might struggle a bit towards the high end. But as you guys can see, when we time this key, we definitely got a plus 10 key, so completion is definitely possible. Over here, something I'll flag. This Arbalest mob, really dangerous. It randomly shoots someone, very similar to Siege of Boralus. Pulled in the mini boss here, this guy absolutely destroys me. He does Savage Flurry, I think I almost died in this pull. I quickly purified the damage here at 160. Stagger <laughs> is pretty insane. I rolled away, self heal, and everything's fine. But I think I might have overestimated how much damage this guy does on a plus 9 when I'm 184. So I pop Celestial Brew when I'm low. Something about Celestial Brew on high keys is you get more and more purified chi stacks and your shields are bigger and bigger. As you guys can see on this AoE pool, my damage is super competitive as a tank. Obviously now a single target is dropping, but I was maintaining 3.6, 3.7 when the pool started. Fairly decent.
Again, just kicking the mob. Savage Flurry really hurts. So I'm popping Celestial Brew towards the end, as you guys can see, to help the healer out. And he's activating the Necrolot banner for 5% or 10% more verse, actually. Single target on this mob, nothing too special. And the rationale is I do not dare to pull the patrol in because the next pull is two Arbalest that have a random aggro table, right? It shows that you're holding threat on them, but it's similar to Siege of Boralus, the snipers. They basically fire anyone they fancy, so it's really dangerous. And that's why we're only doing one mob here. On top of that, you, you guys can see from the cooldowns of my weak aura, I have absolutely nothing. The only thing that we have as a mitigation is the buckskin from the druid. Iron buck, sorry. So it's a bit unfortunate. So again, popping Celestial Brew towards the end, using my Purified Cheese stacks. By the way, Purified Cheese stacks is, in case you guys didn't know, if you're on Heavy Stagger and you Purified something, Purifying Brew, you get 3 stacks of Purified Chi, which is equivalent to 60% larger shield from your Celestial Brew. And that stacks up to 200%. Um, over here, this is super dangerous. The Arbalest is chain casting, you guys can see. Arbalest over here. They're casting on random people, like they're casting on my Rogue, my Boomy. That's why they're getting chunked over here. So it's best to use personals when that happens, or just simply, you know, chain CC the Arbalest if possible, stun them, interrupt their cast. Super critical. You could have definitely have used Typhoon and whatnot to kind of slow down the damage patterns from the Arbalest. As you guys can see, I ringed and my rope basically stunned the Arbalest over here just to help the healer out. First thing is coming in. So he definitely needed help. So nice plays from the group around the CCs on the, the mobs to minimize the amount of incoming damage. Right, working on the mini boss here. And it's super important you run out from the AoE effects. It really hurts. Swift Strike is a buff that allows him to hit harder, like this unbalancing, bro, unbalancing blow will hit a lot harder. And just need to be prepared, have a mitigation up as a tank, make sure you get out whirlwind. Pretty easy mob otherwise. A pet peeve of mine is like, when you're doing Mythic Plus and a Druid drops down airflow, you should definitely try and get within the airflow simply because that's a lot of passive healing that you're missing out on. And obviously in, in cases where, and by the way, I use Touch of Death there. You guys can see I just use it on cooldown. Always use Touch of Death on cooldown um, to maximize DPS in dungeons. As you guys can see, in this pack like that, my DPS was super competitive. Like I was above the Boomkin um, in a pool like that. So Brewmasters, honestly, doing very decent damage in big pools. You can argue a Paladin or a uh, Vengeance Demon Hunter is definitely putting out higher damage, I would probably uh, agree with you, but considering the defensive toolkit, I actually thought Brewmasters aren't that bad in keys at the moment. And I actually did a Vengeance Demon Hunter key today at a plus 9 or plus 10 level, I can't remember. And, and I'll talk about it after this boss, but anyway, when the banner spawns, make sure you swap to the banner, because the banner is applying a movement slow debuff on everyone. And you guys can see the moment we kill it, move so much faster, and we can dodge the abilities here. It's about to send two people from my party to PvP in the arena below. He's sending my Hunter and my Boomkin, as you guys can see. And my Boomkin is conceding because he has no DPS cooldowns up. Brutal combo. Make sure you, as a tank, you have a mitigation up. That's why I popped my Celestial Brew. Over here, you can see that I popped my Weapons of Order, my Kyrian Covenant CD, just to get more damage out on the Oppressive Banner, kill it a bit faster. That way, before the boss does his AoE combos, you know, we all have full movement speed now. So we can easily dodge the abilities here. The boss will always do a semi-circle, and he killed my druid because he didn't run out from the, the slam that he does on the ground. That's a misplay. The slam definitely seems larger than the circle indicates. And right over here, the next banner spawns, so we're all swapping over to it. Pop my Expel Harm there just to help the healer out. As you guys can see, like my Expel Harm is something that I, I always use in moments of danger just to help my healer out a little. And again, look at the DPS on this boss. Actually doing some really competitive DPS in my opinion. 
single target damage is pretty decent and I'm not even running the single target legendary, I'm running the double keck smash legendary. But I'll definitely craft the chart passions legendary and I use my invoke news out here by the way guys. You guys can see I'm using my invoke news out, it's on cooldown now. And just single targeting the banner down so we can get max move speed. When the boss does his annoying abilities like this again. And there you go, the boss is dead. So earlier on what I was talking about, you know, doing keys on Avengers Demon Hunter and I definitely made a mistake. I crafted the Sigil Legendary and I stepped into a plus 9 plus 10 that we pushed and the damage was really high and I felt at the moment that I should have crafted the Fiery Brand Legendary and played the Fiery Brand build but if you haven't crafted a Legendary, you know, consider doing the Fiery Brand build if you're pushing keys this week, especially when you're under geared. Being more defensive definitely helps. So. Circle is a dangerous mob. You always want to call kicks. As you guys can see, we are rotating kicks again on our kick bars. It does a very nasty channel called Withering Discharge. And if that thing goes through, it applies a disease on every single party member. And it hurts. It absolutely hurts. Especially on a fortified week where it's fortified bursting, volcanic. Just that fortified cast going off, it absolutely trucks. So just something to take note of. This wing that we're doing here is all about calling kicks. As long as you call kicks properly, making sure you kick the withering. In this case, I'm kicking star or rather, yeah, I kick, uh, rather my rope kicked first. And I'm saying on voice comms now that let me kick this. That's why I kicked it here. Or rather my rope actually stunned it. Um, and I said probably that I'll kick next. This is probably mine. Yep, I kicked it. And then it's back to my rogue again. This is why rogues are so good at mythic plus because they have so much control and the way i think about it is you can always assign them a mob to lock down while the rest of the party works on it as you guys can see the withering discharge went off because we didn't kick properly so much damage on the party i cured it from my healer because a monk can detox spamming heals expel harm and going for celestial brew here you guys can see because i'm trying to help trying to help my healer stabilize here Lots of damage incoming. Right, so over here again, we're using everything we have in the book. Using Ring, Typhoon, making sure we kick that manually. I just kick the Withering. This is what happens when you're on voice comms and you can actually coordinate. If this was a Puck group that I did in beta, we would have wiped because there's no way we would have kicked all the Withering there. So it really helps in a Puck group. Sorry, it really helps that you have a coordinated group. To kind of push with, call kicks, etc. You guys see me clicking this Mikora? It's the new consumable for you know the chest piece where you can put on a armor kit. It gives you 32 more stamina. Every little bit helps on the first week when you're under geared, like I said. This mob doesn't do anything special, does a frontal, and he also casts it out of his back. So you gotta watch the front and the back of the mob. And the next pull here, I'm basically gearing up, telling the party here that the next pull is dangerous, it's an AoE pull. If they're cooldowns, they'll be great. I literally stood in a volcano there, that was a very bad place. The gas bag is dying here. As you guys can see, my healer has like 3 mana, 5 mana now, so I'm letting him drink. He's drinking. Or we talk about the next pool. So over on this pool, I'm telling people that we need to kick star and we need to have a kick rotation. You guys can see I focus target star. That way I can always focus kick with a macro without even attacking star um, at times. And in this case, I actually ended up kicking circle because I left it to my rogue to handle star essentially. The DK filth charge, if it goes through, is not that big a deal. The bigger deal is definitely the withering charge. The withering discharge. I'm calling for my party to stop here so I can pull this gas pack back. The reason is we did not want to run out to the bridge because it will spawn tons of ads. Trust me, it gets really hectic. It's definitely doable with gear, 
But, you know, we are very, very undergeared at this moment. So we just want to play it safe and time the key. So working on this gas bag again, he does a frontal and a back. So you want to drop the puddles very neatly here, which is what I'm doing. Just to minimize the amount of space it takes up. Alright, it's going to go down here. And now I'm telling people that, okay, for the next pull, please make sure you're stacking together with me because that mobs will start jumping around if you aren't. They'll, they'll jump to you in Africa. As you can see, that it jumped right out there. And while my DPS, they was in standing in Africa. So once they're all in, I AoE sweep and AoE stun. Again, kicking star, making sure we have a control on star. Right, the rogue just uh, managed to stun that cast. And uh, my kick up, so I'll probably kick this or rather my rogue kicked it again. So again, a rogue, that's a lot when it comes to control fights. Allowing the rest of the DPS to kind of focus on just nuking ads and whatnot. So again, I'm calling for kicks. I just kicked. My rogue will probably kick next, although I don't think there was a next kick on this mob here. So the next boss is quite terrifying for a lot of new players because there's a lot going on. You need to dodge hooks and whatnot. But I would say as long as you stay calm, everything's fine. So my hunter is getting out his last pet here. He's a marksman hunter, so he needs to pull up his pet, pop that last, and dismiss the pet again. It's our way around not playing with a mage, I guess. Or a chamois. So you pop that last, right? And the moment you pop that last, I'm also popping my key weapons of order. Watch the burst damage from my brewmaster here. So I'm doing 3.7k, 3.8k burst as a brewmaster. Um, just with last and my cooldowns. You see the chains are self-explanatory. There's a gap in the chains, you just need to move through them. Make sure that when he does his hateful strike, you have a purifying brew to purify the physical damage coming in. And you guys can see like at the end of that, I was doing more damage than my boomy on the opener. And of course, I mean there's a lot of damage incoming and a lot of movement, so he definitely lost DPS. But this is why I kinda wanted to play Kiran for my Brewmaster. And you guys know that I played Necro Lord Brewmaster on the beta service. And the rationale is I think the Kiran Brewmaster is a bit more bursty in terms of damage, which is very important on progression fights. Because sometimes all it takes for you to you know beat the encounter is to phase it slightly faster. And that's kind of the idea why as a Brewmaster that's raiding, I went with Kiran. Although don't get me wrong, Necro Lord completely capable. Um so I want to talk about this boss very quickly. If you actually play in melee range, he wouldn't actually hook you in with the tenderizing smash. But if you're outside of melee range, you guys can see he's actually hooking my ranged DPS um, onto him. So it's just something to take note of. If you play in melee range, everything will be fine. A hunter got hooked here, so I think he's being hooked off the map. Kind of like a bug. I know he died here. So I'm calling for him to release because we're going back to the middle of the room anyway. Heading back up to the surface here. And we just have one more wing to go. It's been quite smooth so far on this run, or on this plus nine key. But I think this is where we made the first mistake of the day, or not of the day, but of the key in this wing. And I'll talk about the mistake later. I'm going the wrong direction here. This is what happens when you know, you're tired and you've done multiple keys for the day. So over here, I'm dropping a Transcendence. You guys can see I dropped Transcendence here. I'm running and tagging the mobs. I'm pulling them out. The reason why I'm pulling them out via Transcendence is because in this narrow hallway here, the green stuff on the floor doesn't spawn. And those things hurt. So I'm calling for stuns and boomy AoE silence here. We just simply AoE them down. Now, if you don't control them, they will spam this shackle ability on you that disables you. That is very problematic. So that's something to be very careful about if you guys are doing this dungeon. So I'm only pulling three of them because obviously uh, we're doing them on the ramp here. 
And we have the dodge swirlies as well. Alright, again, pulling the rest of the room. And now we're exiting the room. The reason why I'm exiting the room is because there's no swirlies in this area of the room. You just have to, you know, call kicks and that's basically it. You guys can see like we are making sure that we kick the targets where relevant. Now this bottle guardian absolutely hurts. It does this thing called soul storm. And pay attention to the party health here. Look at how much is chunking everyone. And I think our mistake here was not coordinating personals before this. We survived the first wave, but I think on a later platform where there's a portal guardian, we actually died. But part of it is also we are very undergeared. You know, we have not done any raids yet. We are due to do raids tonight. So everyone is just running M0 gear. And roughly one level, high level of about 184-85. Porting to this next platform, make sure you kick the Magus when they, dust, when they do this Bone Spear. Bone Spear absolutely hurts. And you want to coordinate kicks here. So that's what we're doing. Call for the Boomy, Solar Beam. And uh, I basically did at my interrupt and star. Again, calling kicks as a tank, very important. Unless you have a DPS doing job, the job for you calling kicks as a tank, always call kicks. And obviously this assumes your voice call man's easy. And I think this is where we had our first major wipe. We, we played this very, very, very badly. I called for a CC on, I think, one of the mobs, which my hunter did. And I was intending to pull the Magus and the Portal Guardian. So you guys can see I single targeted them out. At this point in time though, the plan was to just kick Star, call Kicks, and work on the Portal Guardian. And there should not be other, any other sources of damage. And we should be able to cope. But someone broke out Square at this point in time, as you guys can see. And I, I wasn't sure what broke out Square. But I tried to paralyze it, there was already dots running. As you guys can see, I paralyzed it, but dots were running. We couldn't recover at this point. So that's a wipe. And I'm going to fast forward here. Because it's boring stuff, just us running back. Fast forwarding. Fast forwarding. Right. And now we're doing it different. So I'm calling for the party to actually CC both star and square now. I think we trapped one and we blinded or sapped the other. And that way we worked on the portal guardian by itself. Fast forward a little here, my rogue is running back. All right, he's back. And let me just show you what we did here. The rogue is back. I single taunted the portal guardian and we kicked in square. All right, so again, calling kicks on square. See, I'm calling kicks, I kicked it first. There's a lot of damage going out. We should all be in the afro popping personals. Something that could have been done better is we had Iron Buck here that we didn't use. We could have used it on the rope, I guess. Um, I used Touch of Death to get rid of this mob here, I reckon. Yeah, it's dead here. Instant kill. And we're just working on the Portal Guardian. So I think the safer thing to have done is to CC both mobs and single taunt the Portal Guardian out. I think that was a safer play. But we were a bit ambitious here. Everything worked out though. I don't think we wipe beyond this. So Portal Guardian is finally going to die. This thing is a menace again. If you guys are doing high keys this week, watch out for the Portal Guardian. He absolutely trucks. Calling kicks again. I kicked first. And I think my rope is going next. There you go. And then my hunter should be the one kicking next. Or rather we all stun. That works too. <laughs> As you guys can see, there's this weak aura here that reminds me to use the new consumable, the Shadow Core Oil. I, I don't think I quite got to use it before teleporting down. Alright, here's where we made the second mistake in the dungeon. I was trying to apply Shadow Core Oil here and the macro wasn't working for some reason. So the Death Speakers, or rather the Dark Speakers, they do this very nasty frontal. You guys see this like Kono thing? It basically is a win, like a knockback, that will send you flying off the platform. And I think one of us actually ate it and died. So we're sidestepping, calling kicks. You guys can see we're rotating kicks on the kick bar. 
And I think this is where my healer got knocked off, if I remember right. Yep. I think he got knocked off here. Or is it this one? Now, there you go. You saw him on the edge of the screen getting knocked off there. So he died here, which is very unfortunate. Um, because, I, I mean, the walk back is pretty long in this wing. But anyway, we killed the mob here, and I made a mistake of teleporting here. I was talking, and I, I, I forgot that the next portal you will actually land at instantly aggro mobs. Without a healer, that's suicide. So we actually tried to give it a go here. To try and survive, try and coordinate kicks here. But I think we end up wiping here because we have no healer. So you guys can see we side stepping the death winds, super important. Making sure we kick the bone spear. I actually ring the cast there to buy us time. But at this point in time, it's too much damage and I think we end up wiping. Yep, so we lost time here as well, it was unfortunate. And it all spiraled from, you know, getting hit by death winds on the previous platform. So keys are, you know, very punishing when you're ungeared because you know, you lose a lot of time making mistakes like that. And I'll forward here because just us running back. So it's us running back. And here I'm, you know, using the Shadow Core Oil just to get rid of that weak aura reminder. And waiting for my rope and my healer to run back before we take the portal. Right, everyone's back. And here we are taking the new portal. So we have seven minutes left. And I'm telling everyone that like, you know, if every pl everything plays out, we play this pack normally. No mistakes, we will still time the key. It's a bit tight, but we'll time the key. So the most important is watching death winds, making sure no one gets knocked off on this platform. Calling kicks again. You guys can see everyone is rotating their kicks here. Using rings. Kicking that as me. And then I think my rope was kicking the other one. And as long as you avoid death winds, everything is fine. There you go, another death winds. I think my Boomi died here if I'm not wrong. Or maybe not, we barely survived. It was very hectic, that's for sure. Alright, so we have six minutes to do two bosses. I told everyone like, you know, it's definitely possible, definitely doable. Cool Tarok as a boss, as a tank, you don't really do much. You just stand in melee range and hit the boss. It's a DPS and healer fight. Um, there's a lot of passive incoming damage. So the healer needs to be on the ball. Everyone kind of needs to help the healer out here. The boss does something called Draw Soul. I've talked about it many times. If you have Draw Soul, go stand on the green arms on the ground. You'll capture your soul. You just need to touch your soul again to regain control of your souls. It's that easy. Again, working on Kuta Rock. And you guys can see, like, I was trying to find my flask because my flask ran out and the weak aura was reminding me here. And in the middle of the fight, I couldn't find it. Rather, I couldn't click on it properly. But yeah, it's a fight that's really straightforward as a tank. You just want to be in melee range. If you're outside of melee range, the boss starts casting nasty stuff on the party. Again, draw soul is something where if you have draw soul on you and there's no like arms on the ground, you actually need to run after your image, which is what my hunter is doing here. He's looking for his image. I think he died before he could find it. b resing the hunter here. I called for b res because we are very tight on time. We're 4 minutes 35 away. And he's at 40% health. So there's no way you're going to 2 men this with 2 DPS as you time the key. I'm starting to help out my healer here, just making sure that I mitigate damage as more and more damage comes in. Other than that, I think like what we could have done better is people should be standing in the efflorescence. Efflorescence, I think. Yeah, the green circle here. That's a lot of passive healing. So playing a range class for a healer, it's always good to have them stand in your aflo. Alright, so the boss is going down here. And just looking at time, we definitely have time. Um, 
And we have Bloodlust as well, so I'm confident. And this is where I started telling everyone, like, as long as we play the last boss right, we get all our buffs, our foot buffs, and we use Blast on cooldown, we should be able to kill the boss in 3 minutes. It's a fortified week after all. So I hope keys have been going well for you guys. I personally am really looking forward to the Castle Natria raid that my guild will be doing in I think 2 more hours. Now 2 hours from this point of recording. First day of Season 1. It's always very exciting. I'm getting my flask buff here. Oh, here we are coordinating what to do on the boss. Because there's two dangerous overlaps. One is on the first wave of ad spawning. And the other is the second wave of ad spawning. And I'll kind of talk through what we were doing at the point in time. Pulling the boss, popping last. Last was done. And here we are popping DPS cooldowns. I pop weapons of order here. And you guys can see like, you know, everyone's bursting quite decently in terms of damage. Dark Devastation is a frontal, very simple, sidestep it. Okay, this is where it gets complicated. They cast Grasping Rift to spawn a portal. Ideally, everyone with Manifest Death should be standing close to one another, so the adds will spawn close to one another. And I think unfortunately one of us ran all the way back, you can see like, I think my druid, my healer was being pulled all the way back, and so his ad was like standing in the middle of Africa, we couldn't quite, you know, AoE the ad style or AoE stun etc, which is, which makes it really inconvenient. Um, it really doesn't matter on this key level of difficulty, but as it gets tougher and tougher, it's gonna matter. So ideally you wanna clump them up, AoE them down. The Reaping Scythe does chunk me as a brewmaster as you guys can see, so making sure you have Celestial Brew for those moments is pretty wise. Alright, so I'm asking everyone to stack in here at the edge of the room now, because I know Ghostly Charge is coming, you guys can see it from my boss timers over here. And everyone stacking in, it's always easier to dodge the charges over here. So I'm calling that the charges are coming, everyone watch out. Everyone dodge it, perfect. Now, the next, this overlap is where it's dangerous again. There's a rift and there's ad spawning. And not only that, ghostly charge is coming and echoes of battle are spawning, but you need to move out of the white stuff on the ground. And this is why at this point in time, I called for personals on everyone. Everyone to pop personals at this point, so it reduces the amount of damage incoming. And not only that, we have to move out of, you know, white stuff and, and all these very dangerous abilities on the ground. And right after this, it's a ghostly charge, you guys can see. So I'm asking everyone, watch out for the ghostly charge, move to the corners of the room. My druid went down, my healer went down, I think we be rest at this point in time. Also damage from the reaping scythe. Again, asking everyone to move to the corner here, because there's another overlap that's very nasty, right? Another portal we need all the space we can get. You do not want to be sucked in by the portal, you'll get disabled for a long time. And lastly, calling out ghostly charge again. Everyone needs to dodge, I think my Boomy died to that. But all in all, that was the key. Um, it's the first day of Shadowlands, so... Well, not the first day of Shadowlands, first day of Season 1 of Shadowlands. So pretty happy that we timed a plus 9 and you know we had a plus 10 key to work with for the rest of the week. But in general, we're definitely way under geared to kind of push to the level 14s and 15s. Definitely need more gear, so... I hope this video was helpful for everyone. It was definitely enjoyable for me to do. It was great to be in a push group again on the live servers doing keys. And if the video was helpful, do subscribe to my channel. I publish daily Shadowlands content on this channel. And if you like my user interface, you can download it in the description below. It's entirely free. Thank you so very much for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.